Hi everybody, uh, warm welcome to the Open House Basel um, audience, but also to all other audience that is coming from, from uh, international places. You're very welcome here in the, pro in the online program of Open House Basel. We launched our online program that is um, taking part only today, instead of having an offline event. Um, this one will be in June this year. So um, I, uh, I welcome you to this hour here where we have the exclusive possibility to meet two houses from the modernism in the same time. We can have a parallel presentation of these houses from Mies van der Rohe um, with some experts in place. So this is really very great and I'm very thankful for everybody who makes this possible. Just for our audience to understand, we will have this whole hour now taking time to look at these houses and to talk about these houses. In the first part of this hour, we will, have a, we will get a presentation of these houses and in the second part, we will uh, introduce your questions that you can put in the chat and to see um, uh, what answers can be given and to see how the dialogue is going um, going to develop with all your questions. So, but now um, we are diving into the topic. We show modern living houses to you. So, modernism was um, something that was a very very new architectural style. I don't know if you're an architect or if you're just very new to architecture. But um, before there were the modern, there was the modernism. We had historical styles. We had uh, decorative styles. So Mies van der Rohe was one of the very very important persons, um, who were um, giving this movement um, this direction. There are two main principles um, that are always mentioned with modernism. It is form follows function, and it is the sentence from Mies van der Rohe itself, which is called Let it more. So the modernism architect started to reduce and to not being that decorative anymore. We can see um, uh, an image right now coming from the first house that Mies van der Rohe designed when he was a very young architect. And we see this is, this is not yet the modernism how we know it. So he himself, he was um, being within this development of this new architecture style. And then half a century later on, he was the one designing skyscrapers in the USA. So, these two images make very, very visible the change that happened um, within this time range when the modernism was starting. And we are now going to see two um, private houses that he designed in the 30s. And that's actually um, very close to the point when this whole um, modern architecture started to, 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 um, to really doing something different than it was before. And now I will stop to this because we will read more about later on within the presentation. I'd like to introduce now. First, there is Carsten Krohn. He is um, sitting in Berlin. Um, he actually wanted to be in the House Lemke, the Mies van der Rohe house that is um, in place in Berlin. But right today there was a new lockdown, so he is at his home, but he will present nice pictures. He studied architecture and art history and urbanism. Afterwards, he was working as an architect in the offices of Norman Foster and Daniel Liebeskind. He um, has a PhD in art history. He wrote several books and he was um, working as a professor in Mexico for four years and now he's teaching in a uh, university in Vienna. But it's really interesting that he also wrote a book about Mies van der Rohe, which is called Built Work. So he really knows a lot about, about the different um, uh, buildings that uh, Mies van der Rohe was doing. And right now he's writing in a second book about Mies van der Rohe. So very welcome, Carson Krohn. Now I will introduce um, Iveta Czerna. 
She also studied architecture. She is sitting in um, Burno in Villa Tugendhat. And um, she um, was working 15 years for the National Institute for Monument Protection in Burno. And then from the year 2002, she was director of the Villa Tugendhat. And there she was doing a really great job. So later on in the year 2015, she even received the award for architecture and urbanism from the city of Brno because she was really bringing this whole movement of modernism, of functionalism building in, in Brno. She was really pushing that and, and, um, and is doing a, a really important job about, about this Villa Tugendhat. So, um, very welcome to Iveta um, as well. So, now we are going into the presentations. Um, we will start uh, with the Haus Lemke in uh, Berlin with Carsten Krohn. Please take uh, some minutes to um, explain us how this main principle of form follows function was being realized in this house. What was the uh, function of this house? How was it designed with what architectural elements? Um, you're welcome to explain this and give us a tour. So um, maybe I can answer. Mies him, himself did not consider himself as, as a function, functionalist. Uh, uh, he said, the functions uh, will change. Uh, we don't know how the people will use uh, the, the building. So I give you um, uh, an idea uh, of the house. Here we see it as you approach the, the house uh, from the street. Um, and it's a very uh, simple, uh, minimalistic house. Um, you could argue there is nothing that you could uh, reduce more. It, it's uh, a brick uh, wall uh, with uh, windows and it's uh, not uh, very representative. Um, if we see on the next um, image, uh, the plan of the house and the garden uh, that we see the house is uh, built in the corner of, of, of the site and it opens uh, to uh, the, the, the garden. And on the left, uh, we see a lake. Uh, so the house is in the middle of uh, a large city, uh, not in the middle, it's in, in um, uh, Berlin and uh, on the other side of the lake, you have also a park. And uh, we could see um, the house uh, from the corner on the um, right uh, hand side. And um, once uh, we uh, go inside the house, I can show you on the next image, um, we see a complete transformation. Um, uh, the house is not introverted. Uh, it's suddenly the opposite. It's extroverted uh, through the green space, uh, through the garden. And we have in this diagonal viewing axis, the view uh, from the um, entrance hall through um, the hall uh, that was used as a working space uh, for the client. Uh, I can mention it's, it's a, it, it was built as a private house uh, for a couple without children and um, uh, Lemke uh, was um, producing uh, books and printed um, artifacts. Uh, so also this room on the left uh, was a, a library. On the next image, um, we see the, the next uh, perspective. Um, and here we see um, it's, the house is not box-like at all. It's at, at least L-shaped and it's built uh, around a, a courtyard. It was also called a, a courtyard uh, house and it's built um, around uh, this walnut uh, tree. 
and uh, here we have again a diagonal viewing axis from the inside through the outside uh, to the living room. So the terrace is also part of the house. And in the next image, we see um, the um, um, a climax um, of this um, a passage uh, through the house, the view from the living room uh, through the garden uh, to the lake and to the park um, on, on the other side. And also in this uh, viewing axis, there, there is a, a large tree. So the house uh, was built um, in connection uh, with this uh, landscape and to emphasize uh, the, the site. And the last image shows um, the view um, of the, uh, a view to the house uh, from the garden. Um, now I um, will uh, present uh, some filmed images um, where you can hear uh, this, the sound in order to uh, give you um, a little bit more a sense of, of the place, more that, than uh, photos uh, uh, can do. Uh, this uh, film is um, three and a half minutes and I show it uninterrupted. Ich selbst denke über die Baukunst als ein Ausdruck unserer Zivilisation. Ich denke nicht an persönliche Schöpfungen mit einem persönlichen Gehalt dann wäre ich Maler geworden oder Bildhauer. Aber Baukunst ist so eng mit der ganzen zivilisatorischen Entwicklung verstanden. Sie kann überhaupt nur etwas sein, wenn sie den, den wirklichen Ausdruck unserer Zivilisation darstellt. Alles andere wird meiner Meinung nach wirklich... Äh, Unwichtig sein.
Ja, die, äh, die, diesen Film ähm, habe ich ähm, letzte Woche mit äh, Knut Klaassen. You should talk ah, about Sorry, <laughs> my thoughts were in German. Yeah, no problem. Um, this film I have done um, this uh, week uh, together with uh, Knut Klaassen. And in the end, uh, you could see uh, some pieces of furniture that were designed uh, for the house in collab in um, uh, Mies des designed those furniture together uh, with um, Lili Reich. Um, if you ask me what um, I think is the most um, interesting uh, feature of the house, uh, I would say it's the um, connection of the inside and the, the outside, similar as in, in the Tugendhat house uh, where uh, the windows uh, can slide down and the, the inside and the outside um, are uh, basically connected as a unity. Uh, the same thing is um, achieved here. And I think um, in, in this house, the, the Berlin uh, Lemke house uh, that uh, Mies built uh, as while he was director at, at the Bauhaus, um, here he, he concentrated uh, even more on this um, connection of um, architecture and uh, landscape and inside and outside uh, to uh, un unite this um, as, 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 as a unity. And if you remember the first image, uh, the house as you see it from the uh, street, then you imagine it's a very uh, tiny house. And in fact, it is, but um, as you experience uh, the house, uh, it is the, the opposite. Uh, it is uh, very large uh, because uh, the uh, long distance uh, of the garden, uh, the uh, lake and the park on the other uh, side uh, of the lake uh, is part of the experience uh, in the house. Uh, you are um, experience uh, uh, this um, sense of, of greatness. Thank you very much. So I think we also saw an example of less is more, like Mies always tries to do more with less elements. So that's a good example for this. And now let's jump over to um, Iveta Czerna, to Burno. So I, I'd like to invite you to introduce this house to show um, how the, the principles of modernism are, are um, developed in this house and to give us this introduction. Uh, good afternoon. Let me uh, briefly introduce uh, our house, which is a little bit larger and bigger than, than House Lamke. Uh, the house has including this living space has uh, 73 rooms so it's really incredible size a house was built uh, in the same time as barcelona pavilion uh, during the years 29 and 19 uh, 2030 it was finished during the 16 month uh, the newly married couple greta and fritz together uh, commissioners or builders of the house met uh, mies van der Rohe for the first time in berlin and because they really were enthusiastic of uh, impressions from Perel's house, it was the house for art, art collector uh, Dr. Fuchs, and also they could see before uh, Weissenhof estate, uh, they really were sure that they met genius architect. And it's really important that the agreement between the clients and between the architect was fully respected. Uh, after the after uh, finishing of the house in 1930, it was really clear that uh, the work of of uh, Miss Fandera was so successful that the house started to be 
really well known immediately, especially thanks to international exhibition in the Museum of Modern Art in New York uh, in 1932 even more well known in abroad than in Czechoslovakia and uh, the clients really respect him and uh, and uh, maybe it is uh, clear uh, from the quote of uh, Greta Tugendat uh, she said I truly longed for modern and spacious spacious house uh, because my husband and me we were horrified of uh, interiors full of textile and uh, object of art, uh, which we had know from our childhood. It means that not only less is more and uh, interior is respecting and flowing to exterior, principle of flowing space, but also a rare e and exotic material, for instance, onyx work from Morocco, uh, Makassar Ebony from Asia and others, but also the technical and construction structure of the house and technical equipment of the house created from, uh, from this building uh, the candidate to UNESCO list. And in 2001, uh, really, the house was listed in this World Heritage list, not only because space and materials and principle of the flowing space, but also because the incredible number of authentic details, constructions in the house. Even after the restoration campaign, uh, campaigns in 2005, we were sure that we are in a contrast and in a comparison of the house, which is the most authentic uh, Mies van der Rohe work in the Europe. So that's why that's uh, the restoration of the house, which started in 2018, uh, sorry, 2010, and was finished 2012, uh, was done together with the cooperation of international experts and specialists of modern movement architecture. So the principle, less is more, for following forms, was added to another Mies van der Rohe motto, God is in detail. In this moment, I would, I would like to, to invite you to the film. Uh, let me some more uh, information about the family. Greta and Fritz uh, together that were German, spe German speaking, uh, very rich and wealthy family. Uh, Berno was in that time the center of the textile industry in the, in the, in the Europe. And that's why that uh, uh, highly educated uh, family uh, invited Miss Fanero to Beno. So let's spend one day in Tugendat Villa just now. Thank you. Dobrý den, vítám vás ve Vila Tugendhat, která je mořitelným spostem Dobrý den, a já vás vítám ve Vila Tugendhat, a zároveň začneme naší prohlídku, a já vám na úplně řekl něco. Nyní budeme pomaličku sestupovat po hlavním schodišti, prosím opatrně, může to pod námi maličku pouzat.
otázka, jestli zahrady ty se počítají, tak to byla řádově. Čistá, to je celkem blízko, trošku se to přecenili, je to 241 čistý Učil se slušné. Tady, jak se budete podívat, nejsou téměř žádné stěny. V tom prostoru uvnitř, tak pouze ten Onyx a Eben.
So thank you very much for this um, day in Villa Tugendhat. That's even more than just a tour. If you can, if we can stay a whole day there. <laughs> so, um, what is what is your um, favorite architectural quality there in this house? Can you this add, like, to finish? I think that the the most important thing generally is the feeling of the space. As Greta again that mentioned, the large spaces are liberating you if you are moving inside and no picture cannot change your feeling or cannot repeat your feeling if you are inside or if you are only looking on the picture but uh, to cooperators of me uh, Pandero, i have, have to to uh, to also mention that uh, very important cooperator was lily reich uh, uh, designer german designer who was involved uh, in the design of, uh, especially of freestanding furniture. So you can find in the house uh, the Barcelona armchairs, Tugendhat armchairs, Beno armchairs, uh, Stuttgart armchairs, and others. And also, if we are in this moment in, in the terrace, uh, it's important to mention that also the terrace was designed together with uh, the Beno German uh, green architect uh, Marketa Roder Miller. So it was also important input. Uh, generally, I have to say that uh, the restoration, in fact, uh, gave back uh, the, the original life of the house to the original atmosphere. But uh, Tugendhat family lived there only for eight years. So it was their home only for eight years. And after that, during the war, uh, after the war, when uh, there was ballet school, when the house was touched by the Second World War, when there was the, the special rehabilitation center uh, for children with a spinal defect, or when uh, the Tugendhat uh, house was used as the main capital, main seat for separation of Czechoslovakia in 1992, is uh, reacting or reflecting that this house is really memory of the Czechoslovakian history of 20th century. So there is a lot of very emotional parts and moments which are really transparently reflecting on our visitors. And I have to say that also in this moment, the house is closed for visitors, but uh, in the last 10 years, we had nearby 40, 400,000 visitors. So it's quite a lot of for family house. And we are organizing also another activities. But the last uh, sentence, what I, I would like to add is that last year we celebrated 90 anniversary of uh, uh, building existence of the house. We prepared a lot of lectures, concert, exhibitions, uh, photo exhibitions, camera obscura, uh, uh, or production of uh, other photographs demonstrating the whole work of Miss van der Rohe, not only in uh, Europe, but also in USA. But uh, part of them really uh, went through or were organized only in a, in a calm and melancholic space of empty spaces of the, of the, of the house. So we are looking forward that next month, I, we guess, the house will be again open for all. Great. So thank you very much to give this uh, this uh, view of the house. You mentioned the open plan, and um, uh, Carson was uh, was showing the the this house Lemke, this L plan house. So Carson, what what is your your view? Like how did Mies work with this idea of the open plan and? Uh, where and um, how is it, why is it that different in these two houses? Can you say something about that? Um, with every uh, new house, uh, Mies made um, a, a, a new step in, in a different direction. So if, if we uh, draw a line from the um, Lange and Esther's houses in uh, Krefeld to the um, Tugendhat house, to the Lemke house, to the Farnsworth house, uh, then um, 
each house um, is uh, a new in, in, um, innovation um, um, of a, a house itself. The um, Lemke house um, has not an, an open plan, uh, but um, the interesting uh, feature of this um, L-shaped plan is that um, the continuity uh, of space is not uh, through the house, uh, not only through the house, uh, even though it's not a, an open plan, but in the Lamke house, because of the glass walls and the glass um, uh, doors. Um, in, in the film, you could see uh, the view before you entered the house, you already had the viewing access through the house to the garden. And this, um, uh, flow of space uh, was uh, achieved uh, with, with a different uh, way. Thank you. So we already see like this comparing of the of the plan is is quite different. Now we got a question of of um, of a visitor in the chat that is um, mentioning the brick. Um, she asks. Um, that the brick was used as a constructive element, but also as an expressive statement. So what was the meaning of the brick? And I would add to this question, what was the meaning of the marble that is used in the Villa Tugendhat? We have these two very, very um, different ways of using a stone material. So what was the meaning of these two very different stone um, kinds of stone that he used in the house Lemke and in the house uh, Tugendhat? The um, a brick uh, as a building material was very important for Mies. And in an interview, he said, um, I could also have built the Barcelona Pavilion in brick. Uh, then it wouldn't have been so famous. It wouldn't have been so spectacular. Uh, but the quality, the architectural quality uh, would be the same. And in, in a different statement, he said, uh, the um, material of brick forces the architect uh, to a lot of uh, discipline uh, because you have to imagine the whole uh, dimensions of the house had to be calculated. Um, of this um, one module uh, of, of the, the brick. Um, and it's a, a pure uh, a brick uh, building. So the, it's the, the construction of the house is, is brick, uh, even though uh, he used two different sorts of brick. A brick uh, for uh, that you can't see and the uh, layer on the outside, it's only one uh, layer uh, that shows uh, uh, the character uh, of, of the brick. And there are also um, um, special bricks here in, in different color from yellow to red to, to orange and um, also within a brick uh, there are uh, some mistakes so he used uh, only bricks with those uh, mistakes that, that were um, produced by the burning uh, process. Thank you so now Iveta what, what is your uh... Like, what is the role of this stone element in the Villa Tugendhat? How do you feel about that? How is is there the meaning of this of this stone? Uh, I have to start with the fact that uh, the Mitz van der Rohe was the son of stonemakers, so it means that uh, quite logically and emotionally had a, a great connection from the childhood to to excellent and exotic materials. Uh, Important is the fact that uh, financially, uh, Miss van der Rohe wasn't limited by Tugendhat. So it means that he had possibility. Oh, it, it was really a dream job, I think, for architects. And finally, uh, he could really visit the, the birth in Paris and in Hamburg. And he could buy this 
uh, onyx from Morocco, like one cube, or this uh, marble verde, it was his uh, usual material. Uh, from And I'm not talking about the travertine, yeah? So a lot of buildings, if I will follow the, the Karsten, a lot of buildings designed by Nice in the beginning of 20s and the end of 30s uh, really had a, uh, the similar uh, material structure because also to get that house was in the in the beginning planned at, at the brick house uh, to get that family had possibility to to visit house guben which doesn't exist anymore because it was destroyed uh, if you are looking on the house lange and house esters also miss mother used the bricks but as uh, karsten said uh, there was no more uh, brick material in a good quality and uh, the special arrangement of the stone in, in the house was very important, uh, especially freestanding onyx wall. In fact, it's limited the, the space, flowing space in a living room and functions together with a semicircle, semicircle wall of a dining room where I'm just now in this moment sitting. But I'm a little bit skeptical to what Carson said before. I mean, you said, Mies himself said, he could have done this wall with brick or with marble. It would have been the same. I mean, my opinion, it's not the same at all. It feels completely different to be in front of a brick wall and in front of a marble wall. So what do you think, what were his reasons to choose this one or the other? I mean, it's, it's, it's a big difference if you, of the feeling of being there, of having this wall in your back, if it's brick or marble. No, um, Mies didn't say uh, it's the same, but he said the architectural quality is the same. Also, um, with a cheap material and with a uh, small budget, uh, you can create a great architecture. And uh, that's um, something that is great about uh, the, the Lemke house because um, one could imagine uh, to build uh, the same house uh, today for for one oneself, um, it, it's not um, a relict uh, from a, a different uh, time. Mm -hmm. This this um, leads us to another question that came in the chat. Um, about a luxurious space or a tiny house. I mean, there was the question, the open plan is such a luxurious influence for the perception of nature and light in the house itself. But let's consider that these buildings were placed in a denser area. Would it be the same openness to its surrounding or does modernist architecture strictly ask a large area of greenery? So the question about how can you, um, create this this openness this open plan even in a denser area without a huge park around is this possible um what what is this uh, relation maybe if i can uh, yes. i mentioned before uh, if we talk about material because material it's an architectural language and uh, god is in detail so th that's what we are following but on the other hand, these surroundings, this uh, connection between uh, exterior and interior, including retracting, sliding windows, is very important. But it's not only greenery who is changing the, the, the daily and seasonally uh, atmosphere in the house, but it's also the view. If you are looking on the, a lot of Mies houses, they are standing on the slope. And Villa Tugendat is uh, orientating to the southwest and it's facing not to the garden only, but it's facing to the, the historical horizon, to the, uh, the roof map, we can say, historical map of, of, uh, of the city. We can see the whole uh, towers of the churches in the inner city from here. So it was really important for him. And it said that uh, when uh, Mies for the first time uh, visited uh, the plot here, it was in September 28, it was uh, strictly the view 
who gave him the last and most important argument to agree with the client and to respect uh, their offer. So this transparency of the house is really crucial and uh, how important it was for him is relating between not only the, uh, the transparency in the windows, but also he uh, in fact create the new type of construction for possibility or ability uh, to make the house uh, transparent. So that's why the Tukinat house is skeleton house because two facades, uh, eastern and southern, are completely open to the garden. Yeah. Um, so, yes, but it's, still it's, the, it's, there is still the question about the density. What is it? Isn't it possible to put a Mies living house into a dense area? Would it be possible? Could you still achieve those free plans, those um, open plan idea? Um, or is it just impossible? Uh, maybe I can um, add that Philip Johnson in his catalog of, of Mies, um, he uh, labeled uh, the Lemke house as a courtyard house. And the courtyard houses are the houses, uh, the, the type of building that Mies was obsessed with in the following uh, years. And uh, Philip Johnson made, um, uh, it's quite ironic, uh, the, the wrong conclusion. In, in the uh, catalog, he said uh, the Lemke house was built on a very uh, narrow uh, and small uh, site uh, because uh, the, the concept of the con uh, courtyard house is you could build it in a row, you could build it in a carpet, uh, you don't, you create uh, your own um, piece of, of nature. Um, and the um, uh, shape of, of the plan, the, the L-shaped plan, is the same that he applied for the uh, courtyard row house um, of almost the same time when he designed the uh, Lemke house, also an, an L-shaped uh, building um, and a square um, uh, site uh, with walls. But I want to... Um, uh, connect uh, again to, to the Tugendhat house. It was very interesting what, what you mentioned, uh, that uh, there is not only a relationship uh, to, to the garden, but also to the far distance. Uh, so even before you uh, enter the house, you already have an architectural experience of a long viewing access through the house, both in, in the Lemke house and in the Tugendhat house. And in the Lemke house, um, it's, it's a framed uh, view, almost as a postcard-like of, of, of the uh, castle. And in, in the Lemke house, of course, um, only after you have been in the house, you, you have uh, the connection as well to, to the garden uh, and also to the far uh, different, uh, to, to the far distant distance. So now I, now I would like to introduce a complete different question, but this is like now really the view from today, because everybody talks about sustainability. So there's the question, what role did sustainability play in Mies van der Rohe's projects in the 30s? Is it, is, if any, I mean, is there any role, any thinking about sustainability in this time in Mies' work? Maybe, maybe I can uh, answer. Uh, his grandson, Dirk Lohan, uh, told us the story uh, that uh, he is also an architect and he worked with his uh, grandfather and uh, he studied in Germany and uh, learned at the university all rules of 
isolation uh, glass with two uh, layers. And when he came to Chicago, uh, he asked uh, me, um, but what's about uh, the, the heating and the cost? And Mies answered, uh, uh, we are in America, energy is cheap. So uh, <laughs> it's um, maybe an, an answer in, in the uh, wrong uh, direction. Uh, but um, it, the Lemke House, for example, has um, steel uh, windows um, uh, with uh, metal uh, profiles uh, with uh, only a few millimeters and imagine in, in winter um, there is no isolation. Uh, the huge glass walls of, of the Lemke house is the same uh, details that were used for industrial buildings. Uh, he, he ordered that fr from a catalog. He, he didn't uh, de de design the details uh, by him himself. Uh, but now um, there is isolation uh, glass um, in, in the windows and, and there are new heating uh, devices. And um, the quality of architecture uh, did not uh, lack. Uh, so he, he also thought, um, as, as that's why we put uh, this, his quote uh, in, in, in the film, um, that uh, those, with those buildings, he, he tried to um, create a, something of an objective um, a quality that uh, lasts over time and um, uh, there could be new windows, uh, but it's still the, the same architecture. I can maybe, uh, yeah, yes, yes. Maybe follow the cast and it's, uh, I, I don't think so that we, we can talk about sustainability, but I completely agree that the Mies was very progressive in the new form of uh, materials. So we have the same experiences with the, the, the extremely good insulation of the roof of the terraces, uh, of finally of the whole house. Uh, also, we can say that uh, the, the, the inner climate was uh, very excellently, how to say, it, equipped by, uh, by air technology rooms. So it means that really you could feel very comfortably in the house. But also we have uh, single glazing like everywhere in, the, in, in the Czechoslovakia and in Europe in that time in 20s and 30s. And on the other hand, uh, in fact, uh, this iron frames and single glazing create you, it puts really more energy to create uh, the, the progressive and comfortable atmosphere. But it said, for your information, it said that uh, the Tugendats used one train wagon of the, of the coke by one season, one heating season. So it's, it's really enormous and huge uh, things which was presented in the technical uh, messages of him. Okay, thank you very much. So we are almost um, at the end of our talk. It was really interesting. And, and now I'd like to ask you to give a last quote, like all, uh, both of you, is there something that everybody should keep in mind about modernism buildings? or maybe about what we can learn from the modernism for the architecture that we are developing today. Carsten, I give you the word first. I uh, didn't show the, the context um, of, of the house, but you can all uh, go there in uh, Google Street uh, view and see the neighboring building. And if, if you look at it, then you would uh, think uh, that was built before the Lemke house, but actually it, it was uh, built after. Uh, that is still um, amazing that uh, the house um, uh, 
is not um, uh, old old fashioned uh, now or that you can see it's a typical uh, re result of, of the 20s or uh, 30s uh, building. Um, it's 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 a um, unique uh, building and uh, the quality of, of the brick um, is also um, something uh, that that lasts uh, so so you could uh, touch uh, the wall and have experienced the, the same as when 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 it was uh, built that's different to, to a plastered building which is painted white uh, you you have to repaint it um, um, all the time otherwise it looks um, old. Yeah. Thank you. So let's go to um, Iveta and you can have your last quote. I think that's uh, the extremely great advantage of uh, Mies van der Rohe architecture is that they are still looking modern. If you are visiting the Tugendhat house, you have an inside feeling that it was designed yesterday or uh, one year ago. So it's uh, very important that this archi architecture is uh, the holder of the quality, holder of the form and holder of the architectural principles. That's why that's in every book of uh, architecture for students in a university, you will find uh, we are to get that maximally on 10 page. And important is uh, the work with the space and the work with the surroundings. Uh, maybe I will add the last quote or discussion between uh, Tugendhat Kapla and Mies van der Rohe because uh, if you noticed in the film, there is only a few piece of art in the house. There's only one sculpture. Uh, it's a sculpture of uh, Wilhelm Lembruck observing torso, woman torso. And uh, recommendation of Mies to clients was your picture is your view from the window. And I think you will agree with me. Thank you very much. So I think this is also something that we really um, uh, get to see in many places, in many new houses, like this, this um, idea of the, the nature being framed and um, being the, the picture that you put in your living room. So, um, Thank you very much uh, to share uh, your knowledge and your images with us. I see now we have another view with the camera. Um, but um, Hannah just uh, shares uh, the last image of the house Lemke again, just to remind what Karsten mentioned before with the brick, because we, we couldn't see it during your talk. So Let's finish with this image here and I say um, thank you very much, Iveta, to be with us. Um, thank you to Open House Burno to um, do this cooperation. Thank you to Carsten to take your time and uh, prepare this material. And um, we hope that we can uh, put this uh, talk uh, on our YouTube channel very soon. And. Um, just for our community who is listening now, um, in just one hour we will continue with our second live event where we will have a look into uh, two modern buildings, one in Basel and one in Los Angeles. This one will be in German, so um, be back there and have a good hour in between. Bye everybody.